Here's some of the answers to the you try some naming ionic compounds. So when you're naming ionic compounds, you just name the ions involved. When you look at that first example of Al2SO43, you did, first thing you do is write down the name for Al. That's aluminum. There's no need to have a Roman numeral with aluminum because when you look at where aluminum is on the periodic table, you know that the charge on that aluminum is always going to be plus three. No Roman numeral necessary. Now we go to the nonmetal portion. The nonmetal portion is made up of multiple elements, sulfur and oxygen. It's put in parentheses with a three on the outside. So we have three somethings. We need to know what that something is called. When you look on your periodic table, look on that charge sheet, SO4 is called sulfate. Now a lot of people have this urge to say trisulfate. There's no numerical prefixes in an ionic compound, just sulfate. You'll know how many of each piece to use based on where their char what their charges are. The next guy, that ZnBr2, when you look at where Zn is on the periodic table, you might think that we needed a Roman numeral. But zinc is one of the special ones that has a consistent charge no matter what. Zinc is always plus two. And when you look at it here, it doesn't say zinc Roman numeral two. It just says zinc. So that's what we're going to write down is just zinc. Then Br2. Yes, there's two of them, but it's just Br, so we would say bromide. For that Cr2O3, we're going to need a Roman numeral for that one because based on where chromium is on the periodic table, chromium's in the center right here, chromium. You can't just say chromium. We don't know what the charge of the chromium is based on where that chromium is located. So when we look at our chart sheet, you could see chromium could be plus two or plus three. We have to figure out which kind of chromium we've got in this problem. So to figure that out, we look at the nonmetal portion. The nonmetal portion is made up of three O's, just O. So we ask ourselves, what would the charge of just O be? would be negative 2. We have three O's, each at negative 2, for a total of negative 6. That means the left-hand side has to be positive 6 total. We have two chromiums to support that positive 6 charge, so each chromium would have to be positive 3. Chromium, Roman numeral 3, oxide. The last example PbS2O3 in parentheses with the 2. Pb is lead. When you look at where lead is, um, it's right here. We already have it highlighted. I'll do an extra color here, right? Here's our lead. And you might think that lead is in that column there, might be plus or minus 4. Uh, lead can vary, its charge can fluctuate. It could either be plus two or plus four. So we gotta figure out what kind of lead it is in this problem. So it's with this S2O3 thing. Yes, there's a parentheses with a two. So we have two of whatever that thing that's highlighted there is called. So we gotta find S2O3. S2O3 is all the way at the bottom down here, thiosulfate. Thiosulfate has a charge of negative two. So I wrote down the word thiosulfate, figured out it has a charge of negative two. There's two of them, so that means the total charge on the right-hand side is negative four. The lead, then, must be positive four to balance that out. So I write red, lead, 
Roman numeral 4, thiosulfate.